as welcome this is James Graves and it's time to move through another module and this one we're going to be talking about IPv4 network ranges default mask values and CEDAR notations up to this point what do we know well we know how to convert decimal to binary we got a little cheat sheet up here if we need to uh, make some conversions we understand our IP class ranges A's B's and C's we understand those private ranges that exist inside those same remember private internal networks and the remaining addresses in these ranges are public or things that communicate on the public network the internet now whenever we get a class assigned based on the initial bit pattern that we see devices can quickly associate a default mask value so what are we talking about here well let's remember that we have a class A a class A has a beginning bit pattern of zero. Okay? Zero anything. If it starts with a zero in this bit pattern, the value will be no higher than 127. Alright? If all of these bits are on, we're at 127. If all of these bits are off down to this point, then we're dealing with one so class A 1 through 126 has a beginning bit pattern of 0 and now comes the new piece that we're going to introduce that means by default as a device sees this as the initial bit pattern it understands that it should have a default mask value associated of 255.0.0.0. What in the world are we talking about? Let's break the rest of these down and then we're going to get, in, get into some detail around this concept. What does our class B's begin with? Well, if that first bit is on, and that second bit is off regardless of what happens afterward we are then dealing with a class B how do we know quick review if this guy's on we at least have 128 as the initial uh, value this guy's off we know we're gonna be no higher than 191 because if these are all on we're at 191 if they're all off we're at 128 so that puts us in that range that means that the device understands that we should have a default mask value of 255, 255, 0, 0. 192 to 223, we are paying attention to the first three, 110. So regardless of what happens from this point down, if I start 110 as my bit pattern in my very first octet, I am at least at 192. I can be no higher than 223. So regardless of what happens here down, I know I'm at a class C, and I know I have a default mask value of 255, 255, 255, 0. Let's figure out what in the world this mask value is and how that comes into play. Well, as we said earlier, when we see an address, an IPv4 address, we understand that we are dealing with a portion of it locating where a device is located at. In other words, a network portion of an address. There's another portion of that address which will be the actual host. So one piece is going to be location or the network. Another piece will be device. Our mask, our subnet mask, that's what creates that division for us inside of the IP address. 
we're going to work with class C's because class C's tend to be the easiest to understand. So looking at this right here, class C, we're going to have an IP address that begins 192 to 223, a bit pattern that starts here, 110, and a mask value of 255, 255, 255, 0. So let's look at my IP address again. We're dealing with 192, 168.1.7. You see that mask value underneath of 255, 255, 255, 0. Okay? So 192, 168, 1, 7. This is our mask. As we're beginning here, it's a lot easier to write this guy underneath the IP address because these octets they correspond to one another what is this value right here 255 255 255 0 in binary well we understand that we have a potential to reach 255 if all bits are enabled right so that means that this value becomes 255 this guy equals 255 this guy equals 255 this guy equals 0 so we can now quickly take this mask look at it here in a binary pattern and what we actually end up doing when we do that is we are creating our division from our network to our host values we are saying at this point these guys anything associated in this last octet becomes our host portion and anything associated this way this becomes our network portion this is our location this is if we need to send data to that device where do we send it to this is the device or the host that we're communicating with at that point in time when these ones stop the network portion stops when the zeros start, our host portion begins of our IP address. So if we correlate this octet to this octet to this octet, this portion right here, that is my computer. This portion right here. This is where I am. We have a network portion and we have me on that network. And it is created by that division and that mask. Now here's something very interesting. Let's take a look at these at how subnet masks can be created and established. Now we understand that if we want to create the IP address of 192 for that octet on on off 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 right we wanted to make 168 well we're gonna go on off on off on off 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 right so you see how we can kind of slide bits in and out in this pattern to create a number. Subnet masks do not work that way. Subnet masks have to create that division based on where the ones are and where the zeros are. So subnet masks have to build this way, left to right. If we look at our default mask of 255, 255, 255, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, then zeros. We cannot, we cannot just put a zero somewhere here in the middle. 
it cannot be one 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 zero one 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 wouldn't happen because then where's our division our division then gets messed up subnet mass build from left to right and the bit to the right cannot be enabled if the bit to the left is not enabled there's our division so now we understand that we have this guy 192 168 1 7 network 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 host based on the corresponding values of our subnet mask look at all those zeros here's something else interesting now remember an IP address not the mask the IP address this guy can be anything from 0 through 255 well this mask that's directly associated uh, tells us what this range can actually be for this particular network that we may be referencing as an example if we have a mask value of 255, 255, 255, 0 corresponding back to my IP address of 192, 168, 1, 7 understanding that this octet let's get another color in here understanding this octet right here can have a value anywhere in this range 256 potential numeric values up here we take our mask and if we subtract what our mask value is to that octet just this octet right here we will see that we have locked it to one address only this network can only have 192 in that octet take this second block here we're going to create that same division 256 possible numeric values up here minus the mask value associated to that octet we can only have one possible value for this network in that octet repeat the process here we can only have one possible value in that octet network 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 my city my street my uh, state my zip code that is not adjusting in this example at all that is where we are but this guy right here how many people reside at that residence can adjust so we started off with 256 potential values up here our mask is indicating that we're gonna limit that range by zero so we can have 256 potential values up here or this full range for that IP of 0 through 255 now that helps us out because we have to determine these ranges because we have to understand two different things we have to know one what is the network ID in other words what is the identifying address for that network and we also have to understand what is our broadcast for that network in other words if we have to communicate with every device on that network where do we send communications what address can we send it to so that it gets replicated oh, I'm sorry so that it gets communicated for every device to receive it remember if you want data sent to me you send it there and I get it broadcast means if you want communication sent to me and the printer and the server or another device or any other devices that exist on that network it's like we take out a megaphone and we scream into it so that everything in in reach can actually hear the same communications well that's gonna be our broadcast once we determine those we can now determine what the range is that we can actually assign to devices inside the network because this cannot be used for a host this cannot be used for a host 
wouldn't make sense if I had an address that was the broadcast so when you send communications to me it went to everybody you cannot assign this to a device you cannot assign this to a device but we will have to determine what our ranges are that we can assign devices to so here's what we're talking about and this guy right here we know for this network we are limited to this we know that this is the very first possible value that could be in this host range because we're dealing with anything from 0 to 255 so that's the very first possible number that identifies our network what is the very last possible address that we can have inside this network 255 that is it that maxes it out that's our 256 potential values right there that is the broadcast what do we uh, assign to any of our devices? Well, DHCP or static, however we're associating addresses to devices, they would have to be specified in this network in this range. Anything from 192, 168, 11, so 192, 168, 1, 254, anything in that range is what I can put to a PC to a device uh, a phone that may be attaching to my network to a printer to a server but recall that we cannot have duplicate IP addresses on a network therefore that's where our ranges come into play if I needed enough addresses to communicate to 300 devices on this network I could not use a class C based address with a mask value like this because I'm limited. I'm limited to 254 possible values. If you took this mask value, subtracted from the octet, you understand that there's 256 addresses in that network. Subtract the two that you cannot use. You will then be able to determine your usable range. 254. I can have 254 devices that could exist on this network. Now our class B addresses, we're going to uh, understand first off from our previous uh, modules that we're dealing with 128 to 191, so again, quick review, on, off. This means we are at least at 128. We're at a max of 191, because if this bit is not enabled, we can't reach 192. Okay, so on, off, and we're now dealing with an IP address that begins that first octet 128 through 191. Our default mask value 255.255.0.0 or 1234567812345678 one two three four five six seven eight and then the rest of our bits are off so what are we saying here well let's put an address down here let's get it in that right range and let's take a look at it put us at uh, 142 21 uh, 167 167 22 uh, that'll work looking at that and judging from our mask here we are saying at this division point this guy defines our network and this guy defines our hosts inside the network so you can see that division taking place right there so in other words our network address remember we need to find our net ID 142 21 0 0 that is the first possible network that could exist network network these can be anything from 0 through 255 and 0 through 255 our host address in this example is the 167.2 that would be the John Doe or the Jane Doe or in this case the computer the device the server the printer whatever it is 
that is his identifiable address this is how you find them this is our network so we go network network host host recall that these octets anything from 0 through 255 so this first block here can have 256 potential combination or numbers in it and this guy can have 256 potential numbers in it when you multiply those by each other you will find that our networks can have 65,536 unique addresses in there the unique addresses are everything from 142 21 0 0 to 0 1 0 2 0 3 this guy continues to build until he reaches 255 and then the next one becomes 1.0 1 1.1 1 .1, 1 .1, 1 1.2 and this continues to build until we hit 255 again then this second oct our third octet here actually becomes 2.0 2.1 2.2 and they continue to build that way so when you go through that whole cycle and this guy builds all the way up to 255 255 we're looking at 65,536 addresses of that two of them are not usable do you recall which two are not usable my net ID is not usable which would be this guy right there 142 2100 that's the first possible address your broadcast is not going to be usable which is 142 21 remember those do not change those are our networks that's our network address this is where we have some play and some flexibility there is our broadcast not assignable alright these cannot go to devices meaning that we can assign to a device anything in this range so as you can see if we are using just default masks and we have over 254 hosts to put into a network from a default standpoint we have to move back up here to a B to move to a B that means that uh, we now have let's say we needed 350 addresses we move to a B well a B allows us 65,534 devices on it that is much greater than 350 in fact it's so much larger that we would then be extremely wasteful of our addresses that's why our next module is going to be based around creating custom subnet masks so that we can shrink these networks to different sizes before we get to that concept let's do one last example we're going to look at a class A and see how that breaks down like magic everything's cleaned up we have a class A address here that we're going to look at class A addresses are network host 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 or in other words they have mask values of 255 0 0 0 by default which we understand to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 bits on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 bits off. That in a binary format is our mask value. Now let's get an IP address. Well, real quick, just to review here. If this first bit right here is off, we know we're dealing with a class A because we know that we'll never reach 128 in value. It's always going to be less than 128, so we're in a class A. All right so our number here that we're gonna work with 1 through 126 let's give it a um, we'll do 96 we'll say 96 126 12 or 187 looking at this number right here we have a division that's taking place because of our mask 
this guy right here is locked into one value so we are on the 96 network with the lowest possible address being 96000 and that being our net ID we're going to have a broadcast now that we can look at of 96 now remember 0 through 255 255 255 255 that's our max value you recall unassignable so we are dealing with a range of 96 0 0 1 all the way through 96 255 255 254 which means that we can have how many hosts in this uh, in this network well let's do the math and figure out what we're looking at this octet we're saying we can have 256 here we're saying we can use 256 here we're saying we can use 256 here which is going to mean 256 times 256 times there's our 65,536 if you remember that from our class B well now we got a whole nother octet to work with 16 million seven hundred seventy seven thousand two hundred and sixteen hosts that we can have in this network that's extremely large when would we ever need that well we probably won't but an ISP might have a class A address as we saw um, from the previous nugget dealing with IPv4 classes public private mine was in a class A which means that that was the range now that's before they chop it up and make smaller masks out of it but that is the total possible unique addresses the total possible hosts so you gotta take two out of there because our net ID and our broadcast are not assignable we can have that many possible hosts that is a lot of hosts to put into a network so we have seen at this point in time uh, how to take a range determine a class from a class determine how many hosts can be available in there identify a network ID identify a broadcast and identify a range these are all very powerful tools that we're going to need to use as we do subnetting coming up alright so the last thing that we're going to cover here in these nuggets of uh, this particular module will be Cedar notation so what is Cedar notation it is basically shorthand for the mask okay so what you do is you think bits okay you think of the network portion as opposed to the host portion remember the network portion is anywhere ones exist in the mask that's how many bits are enabled when you get to Cedar so let's look at an example here we have 192 168 uh, we got one zero we know we're dealing with a IP address there alright we're going 255 uh, you guys should know this alright you gotta know this we know we're dealing with a class C so we have to understand we're dealing with 255 255 255 zero in other words we're dealing with a network portion a network portion a network portion they do not adjust a host portion okay this cedar notation right here one two three four five six seven eight 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 how many bits are enabled remember these are bytes of information so they're eight bits per octet eight sixteen twenty four eight bits here eight bits here eight bits here so we're dealing with a cedar notation of twenty four slash twenty four just like we have up here okay let's look at this little diagram I created this should help you out stretch it all the way across 
All right, so what is Cedar notation? Shorthand mass, think bit. So the IP address 192.168.10 slash 24 references these bits right here. This address of 192.168.10. 255, look at this, 8 bits on. Match the green to the green. Red, 255 to red, 8 bits on. Orange, 255 orange 8 bits on last octet is 0 our host portion there you go so slash 24 basically means the first 24 bits of the mask are enabled what happened if this happened to be a class B remember our class B default masks class B default masks are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 one two three four five six seven eight one two three four five six seven eight what does that equal slash sixteen the first sixteen bits are on so two fifty five two fifty five zero zero is a class a slash sixteen cedar notation okay class a we basically just jump back up here one two three four five six seven eight we are then dealing with zero 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 how many bits are on the first eight bits are on that's all cedar is very quick and simple if you see a slash and a number that tells you how many bits are enabled now remember mask values only build left to right. This is again, this is not an IP address where we create the pattern we need to get the number we need. Does not work like that. Mask values build from left to right. Okay? So this ninth bit right here cannot be on unless this eighth bit right here is on. You cannot get to a slash 16 until the first 15 before it are enabled. Same for a C. Let's look at uh, 172, 31, 28, 40. What are we looking at here? Well, we understand that we're dealing with this as our first two bits in our binary for this octet. So we are in a class B we understand that with a class B we're dealing with a mask value that is network network host host we also now understand that we are dealing with a default value of slash 16 8 16 the first 16 bits are enabled of our mask at this point in time we should be very comfortable doing decimal to binary conversions. We should be very comfortable understanding our classes as well as our private ranges. We're going to have to remember those as well. We should be very comfortable understanding IPv4 network ranges if we get a default mask value a slash 24, a slash 16, or a slash 8, we should be able to associate that back to a class and we should be able to understand from a default mask value our network portion and our host portion. We should understand where the network ID is, where the broadcast is, what the network range is, and we should also understand our Cedar notation. If we get a slash whatever, we should understand what that means. Slash 24, means the first 24 bits are on. We have to understand those concepts because from here we're going to begin moving into subnet masking now where we create custom subnet masks and we increase and decrease network sizes based on that information that we're going to provide in our mask bit. Okay, um, This is James Graves. I hope you had a good time going through this module here and I'll see you with our next video. Thanks.